Hello, and welcome to our Ask the Expert series. I am Diane Southard, your DNA guide, and we have been hosting experts all month to talk about DNA and how these different companies can help you in your own research uh, looking for any specific ancestor. So today we are very pleased to have Johnny Pearl from DNA Painter with us. Welcome, Johnny. Uh, hi, Diane. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So he's had a, a long day already. I guess all of you who are in the UK are kind of at the end of your day. So we're really grateful that he joined us here in the middle of my day. Um, so my first question, uh, Johnny, for you is, what is the journey that led you to genealogy? What's your origin story? Uh, sure. Uh, it's a slightly unusual one. I started out with buildings, right? So I've always been into history and what was there before. But I grew up not in the place where I was originally from. I grew up in a place without any family close by. And um, I was really interested in the buildings that had been there that had been demolished and all that stuff. So I was one of these people who had all these books. Uh, I grew up in a town called Bedford, about 60 miles north of London. I had all these books showing which buildings were in which place. And I wandered around and found little fragments of walls and dreamt about what they'd be like. But I guess in the back of my mind, I was like, wait a minute, you know, I'm, uh, I've got quite an interesting background but I was probably in my 30s when I got into it I was I was, I was about 2007 uh, and I remember the day I remember my mum coming over and just sketching some names on a piece of paper and me thinking how did I not know these names and some of them were wrong actually but but you know what I mean <laughs> how did I not know these names and you know what why am I not spending every moment of my life thinking about this and it, it was very sudden yeah so that's oh, interesting so was your mom at all a, a genealogist or she was just uh, she had had a few years of, of of dabbling a little bit um I think we all of us who are serious about this know what I'm talking about you know like <laughs> some people are really serious about it and some people you know dabble a little she'd done a little bit of dabbling uh and she so she, I mean she'd also she's from Northern Ireland but she she you know she'd been in England for 30 40 years mm -hmm. so she yeah she was kind of reminiscing a bit yeah okay interesting so then tell us how you got from there, that moment at a table with your mom scribbling some names <laughs> to the creation of DNA Painter. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I spent those first years really fanatically, you know, getting obsessed as a lot of us on this call probably did. Um, and I didn't get a DNA test because I'm, I'm uh, you know, scientifically illiterate, really. I, I, I don't want to say that because it's not true, but I, I started out not really knowing DNA well. Like I, I hadn't, I hadn't studied biology to a high level at all. So I was a bit like, "What is this? Is there anything in it, really?" And 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 I'm, I, I don't know. There, there was a moment when I finally paid the money. Ancestry had an offer, and I paid forty nine pounds for a test. It was at the end of twenty sixteen, and. When I got it back, I still didn't really know what I was dealing with. If there's anyone from the UK on this call, on this uh, watching this, I know there are some people. So I've seen some names. I know it's hard for us, right? We're dealing with scraps quite often. We're do you don't have these big matches. So, oh, there's another second cousin that I know. You don't tend to have that, and I'm I'm still dealing with these every day, and a lot of us are. So I struggled really to make any connections, and when I did make a connection, what I wanted to do was tell the world about it. I wanted to be like, hey, you know. These are the common ancestors, everyone. You know, I found out who this matches, and I didn't feel like I had a forum to do that. Mm -hmm. So I literally made it for myself because I wanted to be able to say, well, I know who this matches, and therefore I know where these bits of DNA came from. Uh, and I, I wanted to do that. So that's why I did it. <laughs> that's amazing. And I'm, I guess maybe you should tell us, like, I have lots of things I want to do too, but I'm not actually capable of them. So tell us about how, how are you like even capable of creating something like Dean? Okay. Yeah. So I had a slightly unusual career. I, I was a, an English major when I went to college, uh, but I happened to graduate at the dawn of the internet. And I had a, I had a tutor at the university of Birmingham in England who introduced me to the internet in 1994. Hmm. So I was kind of one of those uh, early adopter types, I guess with that. And my first job was actually for a website called Biomednet. Uh, funny enough, and their logo is like the double helix. It's really funny thinking back now that I'm involved with DNA. And um, so I worked on scientific journals for a couple of years. Uh, and I wasn't really technical. You know, I didn't know. I, I got very computer literate and really good at doing stuff with data. But I wasn't like a programmer. That kind of took about four or five years to kind of percolate. And um, anyway, to cut to the chase, 
in 2016, I was actually a freelance web developer. So I'd, I'd run a web development agency in London for years, got kind of burnt out and tired. And uh, I was really into genealogy. I'd given up that job. I was like, yeah, I can do this all, all the time now. <laughs> Just a few jobs on the side. And uh, so, yeah, I had the skill set to do it. Don't get me wrong. I had to learn a lot to do it. Like I knew... I clearly knew what I wanted to do, so therefore I could I could do that work. I could push myself to to do it because all you need is a clear goal, right? To, yeah. to succeed in anything, and I had that goal. So I that love it. it that's that's actually very inspiring, and it's it plays to one of my very favorite life themes. I love getting older because then I can look back at this life and see how at every juncture I was led in the right direction, or had the right education, or had the right tools or met the right people to like lead me to this place where I am. And I just saw that just totally perfectly laid out in your story, how you just had all the right things, the passion, the skill set, the desire, the drive to do this really big, amazing, great thing. So I love that. I love that. Um, that just played out so clearly in what you said. So then um, what was the first tool that you created on DNA Painter? Or what, uh, was, it, what was the first website look like, I guess? Yeah, so it, it was just about chromosome mapping because, um, I mean, honestly, I, did, I didn't even totally understand chromosome mapping at that point, you know? So it was it, I was teaching myself this stuff as I went. So I built, it was in May of 2017, I finally built this kind of local thing where I could map the chromosomes. The first version of it I did, I only had one bar for each chromosome. Like I'd forgotten they were in pairs, you know? I mean, that's how <laughs> how much of a beginner I was, right? But um, then, I don't know, because I was having so much fun with it, I wanted from the start to make it something that other people would also be able to use. It wasn't like I thought, wow, this is going to be a really big success, but I could sense that other people might like it. So I built little, you know, a little membership system so you could register and other people could do it. I don't think I ever imagined how many people would. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so at first, honestly, I didn't, I hadn't, I hadn't planned anything beyond chromosome mapping. It was... It was funny to think because now that's not really the main thing even necessarily, but at the time that, that was what there was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell us what is the most, oh, I'm sorry, not this one. What's the most frequently used feature then at DNA Painter right now? Uh, I was definitely still the shared center Morgan project tool. Uh, and that is because, uh, well, all you, all you need is a number, right? You don't need very, you don't need to know very much about DNA. All you need to do is have gone to your match list seen the number of center morgans that you share with someone sort of thought well, what does that mean uh, and you go to this page you put the number in and you get all kinds of you know different bits of advice about what that means and you don't have to be logged in to do it so that 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 continues to be the most popular page on the site definitely so tell us how that came about because that's a collaborative product right that came from yeah people so how did that happen that is a, it's a funny story really again because you don't always know the value of something you're doing when you do it Mm -hmm. So I, I built this chromosome mapping thing. And as I said, I didn't I didn't think this is going to be big and huge, but I kind of put a lot of work in and I wanted people to care about it. And that's one of the most difficult things you can achieve as a developer. Actually getting people to look at your stuff is hard. And when I, I was in I was in Blaine Bettinger's Facebook group, Genetic Genealogy Tips and Techniques, uh, I learned an enormous amount from it, as I'm sure, you know, thousands and thousands of people have a lot of people on this uh, watching watching us now will have done and he yeah he built out he, he brought out the you know the the 2017 update of that and I saw the grid on the page and in a moment I suddenly thought ah and I could do something with that and if I did that then actually that might help my other stuff get a bit of traction so I remember being I wasn't even on my own computer I was at this old Mac that was in my my in-laws house <laughs> one afternoon my someone someone else was looking after my kids who were very young at that time and I built it in about three hours. It wasn't particularly hard. And then I thought, ah, actually, this isn't that good. I thought this was, <laughs> I thought this was gonna, gonna really be a bit of a breakthrough, but actually I'm not sure. So I left it there. Um, my original code is actually still on this website called CodePen. It's just a kind of place, because I didn't have my own computer. So there's a place where you can kind of drop bits of code. And, um, and I left it there and I didn't think about it for a couple of months. And then one day I just thought, you know what, I'll post this. I posted it into the group. I went to pick my kids up from school. I went to the park and I, I, I got, I opened the Facebook app on my phone and there were like 300 comments. Or oh something. And I was like, okay, actually, <laughs> people dig this. And then, so I didn't even, I didn't talk to Blaine about it at all. I just said, 
because because he, he'd released the data with a kind of Creative Commons license. Yeah. Um, it was a bit like you know, in this group of thousands of people, who's he's not going to necessarily know who I am or want to reply to me. So I just sort of posted it. I did it in a kind of respectful way. I didn't put DNA Painter on it or anything. It just kind of had those blocks that we're all familiar with from the from the Shed CM project. And then the the probability stuff later on just came out of them some separate work that I was doing with Leah Larkin. So that mm. that kind of came a couple of months later. Oh, fascinating. I love it. I love again to hear how all these pieces come together again. And I love that you're just, you keep saying, I didn't know. And I didn't know. And I didn't think it was going to be big and amazing. And yet here we are. And it well, has there's, there's, there's a theme there though, because it's all driven by the community really. Mm -hmm. Like sure. I did a bunch of keystrokes and, you know, setting up websites, but all pretty much from the start. I and mean, even, even before I really launched it, I had beta testers uh, there's a UK genealogy group on Facebook called DNA Help for Genealogy UK, and that's run by Donna Rutherford. So in that group, she allowed me to kind of recruit some people. So from the start, it was all about other people explaining to me what would work best for them, you know? So I'm, I'm just the interpreter of other people's desires. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly as far as the evolution of the website, so you started with the chromosome painter, yeah. and that was driven by your own kind of fascination and desire to do it for yourself but creating it for other people yeah. then you see the shared santa morgan project that blaine had put forth you see an image and you're like click 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 i see how i could make this interactive essentially yeah. right yeah. and then so that was the second piece what came next was that Wado? Uh, yeah it was, yeah it was Wado. yeah so i think in november or december of 2017 maybe it was october it was quite early on leia larkin posted oh I, i've got this tool I'm looking for developer so I'm thinking well hello I can I might be talking <laughs> out there and so I got in touch with her and she sent me this idea and it was all a bit mind-blowing really because you're a bit like what you know what does this really mean uh, and, it, and she had it and she had it set up and working but it was in an excel spreadsheet so um, you had to do a lot of manual working out of relationships before you could start and so she didn't know exactly what she wanted you just knew that it couldn't work like that so we kind of worked collaboratively I think pretty quickly I did a lot of work I mean I was definitely a, a great deal of work but it, it was it was quick enough that uh I think it was I think I showed it to some people in a roots tech in February the next year so it was kind of cooking quite quickly okay so for anybody that is watching that doesn't know what Watto does do you want to just tell us just quickly, uh, sure. what's the purpose of this tool? I will, yeah. So if, uh, I'll actually, I'll do it with an example because that might be quicker. If you've looked through your DNA match list and you sh find that you share DNA with a group of people and you can see how those people are related to each other, but you don't know how you're related to them, then that kind of means that their tree is actually part of your tree. It's just that you don't know how to connect yourself to it. So it's a tool that allows you to put their tree in and then hypothesize about different positions in that tree where you might connect into it. So it basically does math. It looks at all of the individual relationships that you might have with these different people. It looks at the amounts of DNA you share with them and it says, okay, well, you definitely can't be there. You could be here, yeah, and you will. You definitely could be there. That's even more likely. That's the gist. Does that make sense? I hope so for everybody no, watching. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a question here from Janice. I'm going to put up here. Um, so she wants tips for using Watto and lack of matches over 40 centimorgan. So maybe first sure. speak to why it's recommended that you use matches over 40 and sure. then address her question. Yeah. So um, – as we're probably all familiar, when you share DNA with a match, particularly as a match becomes more remote, it's harder and harder to use that number to figure out how you're actually related to them. Because for more distant relatives, you might share absolutely nothing or you might share loads. So a match of, say, 40 centimorgans, they could be a third cousin or they could be a you know 18th or 20th cousin for all you know. It's very, very tricky. So my tip to you, Janice, would be to go ahead and use it ignore the warnings, but just actually think about those different possibilities. I've got this way, you, there's a table below the, the grid which, can, which will show you what the relationships, what the probabilities are for those relationships. And unfortunately, what you'll find is that those matches are mostly going to be useful for ruling out lines, right? Because it's not a strong enough signal to rule in any other line. So you might have loads and loads of matches under 40 centimorgans, and that might be really useful. You might be able to find common ancestors, and you might be able to say, okay, well, 
it's definitely probably not that line or that line or that line then. But until you get a stronger signal from somewhere else, you're likely to be chasing rainbows, really, because that's kind of the way autosomal DNA works. That's right. Chasing rainbows. Yeah. Well, we'll do it. So. <laughs> okay. There's another question about um, Watto from Lori. So she heard something was in the works as an alternative to Watto specifically for endogamous populations. Is this still happening? It's definitely happening. Uh, I'm actually uh, not really involved in it, but I know that it's due to be launched at Roots Tech next year. So that would be Ooh. in the yeah, end of February 2024. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So look Great. out for that. Great. So just speak really quickly again to people who aren't familiar, like why shouldn't you use the current Watto version for when you have endogamous relationships? Sure. So all of the all of the tools I've built, unfortunately, and a lot of DNA sort of prediction models are based on having one relationship because in many cases that works really well. Right. But particularly as we go further back, uh, one might find that actually there's there's more than one relationship. Now, endogamy specifically uh, is going to involve uh, having many, many tiny, tiny segments that you share with, you know, possibly that you, that you got from common ancestors 10, 20 generations back. So you're going to have an inflative amount of DNA shared. So if you use those matches unadulterated in your Watto tree, you may find that it, it, it rules out relationships that are actually possible because it thinks, oh, no, you share too much for this to be a second or a third cousin. Uh, but similarly, it might actually work the other way as well. It's just going to confuse matters somewhat. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, a lot of people with endogamy do use what are the odds because it's a, a nice, friendly, quick to assemble layout tool. And they do it by being quite smart and, and thinking, OK, well, it's saying this isn't possible, but maybe it actually is. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think there are strategies for using it. I do know of um, pretty serious genealogists who are working with endogamy who do use it. Uh, but I think they're probably doing things like using a higher segment threshold to get that overall number of centimorgans shared and that kind of thing. Yeah. So this just brings up a point. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm often saying and saying it more often than I used to is that as more and more tools get created for us to use to try to make it easier for us to understand relationships to other people on our DNA match lists, we can never discount the power of our own brain. <laughs> right. It's like the tool is just a tool, right? It only knows what you've told it and it only knows what it's programmed to do. Your brain is so much smarter, right? And so you have to actually like think to yourself based on all of the things I know about my family, based on the genealogy I've done, based on other Watto trees that I've created for similar situations. I understand that I should be more focused on this section or that one, or I can rule this in or out or whatever, right? The tool is meant to help you. It's not meant to replace you. Yeah. Very good. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah. Get on exactly. a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I want to put this question up, Laura, but I don't quite understand it. But I think Johnny and I can kind of try to piece it out together. So you may have misunderstood something we were just saying. So we can use Watto to find recent birth family. You can also use Watto to find an unknown two times great grandparent with matches that are over 40. The problem is like at the two times great grandparent level, think about what kinds of cousins your two times grandparent is creating for you right? So two times great grandparents create your third cousins. Okay. So, and then you ask, well, how much DNA do third cousins share with each other? Well, on average, according to the DNA painter tool, the shared centimorgan project tool, about 75 centimorgans, but could they share 40 or 30? Definitely. So there are going to be matches who are descendants of your two times greats who share over 40 centimorgans, and you could use those in the tool. So do you see anything else in there, Johnny, that she might be asking? Uh, I guess overall, yeah, we're not saying don't ever use those matches. It's just if, you, if that's all you've got, you might not get a very strong signal. You might be waiting for, for more information. But sure, they can still be helpful in some cases. It's just you're going to need other matches as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you're looking for three times great, Laura, the, the problem becomes that a three times great grandparent other descendants of that person are your fourth cousins. And on average, we share like 35 centimorgans with our fourth cousins or 25 or nothing, right? And so you can't, yeah. it, you can't expect to get up over that 40 centimorgan threshold with a fourth cousin very often. And so you're just left with 
what you got, like Johnny said. And you're just, it's going to, what it's going to do is the tool will just give you lots of choices. Instead of a few choices that are possible, there's going to be lots of choices that are possible. And that's when you have to then use your own brain, do genealogy and figure out which one you think is the most likely and then pursue records to verify that connection. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about a lot of the tools that are available on the DNA Painter website and everything we've talked about so far is, is, um, is part of kind of one, one view or the other view. So you've got this um, membership, like paid membership site and the free portion of DNA Painter. So maybe you could just help us understand what's the difference in what they get between just anybody can go right now to dnapainter.com and they can use like Watto, sure. they can use the Shared Center Morgan Project versus becoming a member of the DNA Painter website and what they get access to. Sure, yeah. So I tried to make it very, very simple what you can do. So basically... You can do anything you want as a free member with the following exceptions. The, the following things I'm going to say, things you can only do if you're a subscriber. So these things are create additional ancestral trees beyond your first. So I've got this neat tool where you can, in, you can import your GEDCOM and you can say, my name's Johnny. Uh, make me just a, a you know, really nice pedigree chart and where I can you know, do lots of other fun things with it. You can do that once, and it will only import up to fourth great-grandparent level. So if you want to import all of your ancestors further back from than that, if you're lucky enough to have found them, uh, and if you want to maybe try different ancestral trees for different people. So, for example, when I'm trying to get in my head, who is this missing person? Who was that to my ancestor? So my, mom, my mother knew her grandmother really well, and her grandmother was born in 1866, and I do not know who my grandmother's maternal grandmother was. And it bugs me because my mother could just have asked her, right? <laughs> so I, I made an ancestral tree starting with her just to see where those brick walls in the tree are relative to her because I was curious, for example. Uh, and then moving over to chromosome maps, you can have one chromosome map for free if you want to uh, make more than one chromosome map. So say so you're going to play around with maps for relatives, for siblings, for other people who've tested, then you need to have subscription. Uh, also, if you want to do a bulk import, so you can actually import all your matches, all your segments at once uh, from a, a kind of bulk file that you can get from your testing company, uh, you need to be a subscriber to do that as well. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah. Excellent. All right. And they, well, we're going to be sending out. So this is a good time for me to mention that we do send out kind of follow up emails with a little summary of our conversation with our experts. But in order to get that, you have to sign up to get them. And so if you're watching this live, we're going to put it in the chat. And if you're watching this as a recording, it'll be down below in the comment or in the um, description of the video. And so if you also, if you like our channel, then you'll be able to see the different videos that we're posting here um, every time we post one. And the Ask the Expert series has been so popular, we're planning on doing it again sometime soon. So if you want me to tell you when we're doing that, again, you'll need to sign up with that link and sign up to get our emails so I can let you know when we're doing that again. But we'll put information about how to join um, Johnny's membership. And actually he's been very generous and is giving anybody, um, who's watching this, a $10 off your subscription, which is I think extremely generous. So we'll give you all of those details, uh, also in the follow-up email. And then let me see, we've got about seven minutes left. Let's ask this. So what is the most frequently requested feature that you get for a DNA painter? Okay. Yeah, I get. I, you would not believe the volume of inquiries I get, but the most frequently requested feature, and it's not even requested as a feature. I think people people love what are the odds, Watto, mm -hmm. so much that they think, oh, there must just be this bit I haven't found. Where's the bit where I can include the spouse's family mm -hmm. as well as the descendants' family? Because the way what are the odds works is you import your file or you, or you start to draw it in, and you you think, well, who is the most common ancestor of, of these people I've got in the tree? And so you kind of, everyone has to be a descendant of them. But actually, sometimes you'll have matches where it's off um, a spouse's family and people say that they want me to, to do that. And I want to do that. I just haven't figured it out yet. Okay. You know? <laughs> I, I, I second that yeah. <laughs> from everyone else who's asked for it. Okay, we've got a couple other questions from, from our viewers here about um, Watto. So let me just... I wrote down the minutes so I could find it here. Okay, we've got a pretty straightforward question from Nancy. We probably should have said before, what does Watto stand for? I oh, know, I just gave it away. It's what are the odds? 
What are the odds? Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And then Debbie has this question. Do longer than normal generation times interfere with how well Watto works? Uh, not really. It's a good question. In a way, shorter than normal ones can. It, so, so what I do, there's two ways of hypothesizing in Watto. And the way I'd recommend, honestly, is doing it yourself. So using that, that brain Diane was talking about <laughs> and saying who is a candidate to have been, you know, this the, the person you're looking for is the unknown mother or father of someone and you know when that person was born so actually the best way for you to do that is to find them themselves and do it and if you do that then there's no trouble it doesn't matter what the generational time is really unless the person is marked as deceased uh, it's going to be fine when you click that button that says hey you do it for me uh, it's, it's tricky because um speaking as the person who programmed it you have to try and figure it out and sometimes you say well the mother could have been 12, right? So I'm going to let that, I'm going to let it, the grandmother could have been only 36 years older. It's tricky. So mm -hmm. no, they don't have to affect it at all. Debbie is the answer. Thank you. Great. All right. And then I just want to share this from Jody. She says she can't wait to look at Watto. It sounds like exactly what she needs. So Jody, Thanks. make sure and report back to us. We're excited to hear you. You're using this. Um, it's, a, it's a really fantastic tool. I think you will find it extremely helpful. Okay. Let me head back to the questions I had for you. Um, so somewhat related to the question I just asked you, but um, about the items that are on your to-do list. Um, maybe you could give us kind of a sneak peek in behind the scenes at DNA Painter. What are you working on? Maybe something that you feel like might be ready relatively soon versus well, something that you'd really like to do but may never get done. <laughs> well, there has been a theme to this conversation because at the moment when I'm not preparing to talk to people, I'm working on a new version of What Are The Odds? Okay. Uh, and I'm working very keenly on it because, so, so what the, I'm not mean to be sorry for myself, but What Are The Odds was very, very difficult to code. I was operating at the very limit of my ability. And so for that reason, I've almost, I almost dread doing too much stuff on it because I don't, I know, I, I feel like I'm going to get lost. But a user had a really, really, really strong idea um, like three or four years ago. She was like, well, People get confused by some of the terminology, and I've seen it. People in the Facebook group say, well, I don't understand who is the target, who's the hypothesis, what's going on here? And when, when people say that, it's like a dagger to my, to my <laughs> arm because I, I, I know it should be easier to use, but I haven't had the time to make it happen. So um, it's going to be – I won't go into too much detail here because it would be confusing, but it's going to be much less confusing to use in future. OK, yeah. And, and in order to make that happen, I'm, I'm having to do an enormous amount of work. But it's obviously very much worth me doing that work because it will help a lot more people if I can do that. So that is the thing that, well, it better be ready for Roots Tech put it that <laughs> way. and it should be ready before then, hopefully. And the thing I would love to do, but I don't think I will ever do. I, I actually built an interface for this in, tw in 2020. Uh, I would love it if there was a really lovely interface for everyone to, have, to be able to organize their matches from all the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've built that interface, but I've never built the program because privacy issues, really. Um, it's just tricky, isn't it? Uh, Ancestry's mm -hmm. got the biggest database. They're not too keen on you kind of having, you know, downloading those, those matches. Fine. Mm -hmm. It's just too tricky. And also, something like that doesn't belong in a website, does it? It belongs on your computer somewhere safe, really. I'm not, I'm not really a developer of desktop programs uh i'd love to i could give my design to a company that could make it make a piece of desktop software but yeah it's tricky there's so many mm -hmm. so many roadblocks to making that happen that i don't think it will happen okay i've got a geeky question for you from graham yeah. what programming platform do you develop in he wants to know uh sure well, i mostly i mostly develop in javascript the site is actually built on a on a little php mysql based framework but 95% of my programming is, is JavaScript. So it's quite accessible, really. Not, it's not even that geeky. That's quite awesome. geeky. OK, so I've got two follow wrap up questions before we end here. Okay. Um, number one, I, I hope I hope that you're consistently feeling the love of our community for all the work that you're doing. Oh, I do. I'm very grateful. I hope it. so. But if you could ask us to do something to help you in this endeavor, what is it? What can we do to help um, support you? keep giving me feedback on things that are good but also things that are bad particularly uh join my free mailing list if you don't mind because it helps me to sort of spread the word a little bit uh if you think it'd be useful to you feel free to subscribe that's great because honestly i never planned to go into business really but because i want to do this all the time and i can do it all the time uh, it's obviously people who subscribe make that possible 
Uh, but yeah, in general, I'm, I'm enormously appreciative for people's enthusiasm. I get emails from people all the time. And uh, yeah, that's, it's brilliant. Uh, so thanks, awesome. everyone. Good, Appreciate good. it. All right. So did you hear his, his calls to action? Number one, subscribe to his newsletter so that he can help spread the word about the things that are coming up and encourage your friends to do the same. And if you do think you would find value in the tools that he listed. So basically, it's like all the things you can access, but more, right? More trees and yeah. more chromosome browsers and this bulk import feature, which is going to save you a ton of time. So if you feel like those are things that you would value or gone, honestly, you guys, even if you don't, subscribe for a little while. Okay, let's give Johnny some money so that he can yes. spend time doing this amazing development work that we need in the industry. So if you have a chance and you have a little extra cash, let's throw it at Johnny for a few months so that he can keep doing all this good work. And speaking of why, tell us, Johnny, why is this work of family history important to you? Uh, I love that it helps me to connect with people all over the world, the people who love family history, they don't, they're not just from one place or one type of background. It's a very universal thing. I'm sure people aren't universally as obsessed with it as me and you are, but uh, it helps you to connect with people, whatever their background. And I think that's, that's a very special thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to wrap up. We're going to let Johnny go to bed maybe. Um, <laughs> But again, to, to remind you, this is the end of our Ask the Expert series for October, but we are excited to offer it again sometime in the near future, that if you want to be alerted when that's happening, you do need to sign up. And again, if you're watching this live, we're putting that in the chat. If you're not, then it's all underneath this video in the description about all the links we've been talking about. We will also send out a follow-up email to all of you who are getting our emails with all the links to subscribe to Johnny's newsletter as well as to subscribe to the DNA Painter website, though you can just go out and do it. Even if you already have an account, you can just upgrade your account to that paid account and have access to those additional features. Um, it's been a pleasure, Johnny, to have you. And thank you for all of your insight and your passion and all the good things that you're doing to help each of us. I'm also looking forward to Roots Tech to see you again in person and it will be a, a party. Very good. Thank you very much, Dan, for having me on. Thank you for everything. Of course. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye.